Have you ever wondered why bridges are built in so many different shapes? Bridges are more than just structures to cross water bodies at obstruction. They are feats of engineering that vary greatly in shape. As you travel through different cities, you will notice bridges with diverse forms. From graceful arches to towering suspensions, bridges are built in various shapes. In today's exploration, we are diving into the fascinating world of bridge design diversity. The first attribute that can shape the bridge shape is terrain and landscape. In different terrains, engineers choose specific types of bridges that are best suited to the challenges posed by the landscape. When a bridge needs to span across a big gap between mountains, engineers might use a curved bridge called an arch bridge. Arch bridges are often preferred in these settings due to their natural ability to distribute the weight along the curve in compression. The arch shape gracefully harmonizes with the terrain while providing a safe passage below the bridge. Now imagine a wide open space like a valley. Suspension bridges are used in such landscapes. With their tall towers and long main cables, these bridges can elegantly stretch across wide spans. Suspension bridges excel in spanning rivers and connecting regions that feature expansive lowlands. Urban landscapes with their constrained spaces often require bridges that integrate seamlessly with their existing infrastructure. Truss bridges and beam bridges are frequently chosen for their efficiency and compact footprints, allowing for efficient use of available spaces while keeping traffic flowing smoothly. The second attribute that can determine the bridge shape is the span length. The distance a bridge needs to cross plays a crucial role in determining the best suited design. For shorter spans, like crossing a small stream or road, simple design like beam bridges come into play. Beam bridges are straightforward structures with horizontal beams supported by columns or piers. As the span length increases, the challenges become more complex. Medium to long span may call for truss bridges which use diagonal elements to distribute the load and provide additional stability. Truss bridges are often seen on highways and railroads where they efficiently cross distances that exceed the capabilities of the beam bridges. The next attribute that can shape the bridge is aesthetic and culture. The choice of bridge type is often influenced by the desire to harmonize the structure with its environment. For instance, in a city with lots of tall buildings, they might pick a bridge that looks modern and sleek, like those with tall towers and cables. These bridges not only work functionally well, but also adds to the city's beauty. In more natural settings, engineers might choose arch bridges that suits the curves of the landscape. The next attribute that can decide the bridge shape is material availability. Engineers carefully consider materials that are accessible in the region where the bridge will be constructed. If the available materials are timber, engineers might lead towards building wooden bridges. In some cases, they might use a combination of materials to achieve the desired balance of strength and aesthetics. For example, a bridge might have a concrete base with steel reinforcement or cables, creating a hybrid design that leverages the benefits of both materials. The variation in bridge shapes can be attributed to a combination of factors that influence the design. The interplay of these factors result in a diverse array of bridge shapes each designed to address a specific challenge and satisfy the functionality, aesthetics and engineering ingenuity. So next time you cross a bridge, remember that it's not about getting to the other side. Think about which of these factors would have shaped the design of the bridge. Thank you for listening. If you like the video, please like and subscribe for more similar content.